saved from scrap. There is a scrapyard near Edward Station. It is full of rusty old cars and machinery. They are brought there to be broken up. The pieces are loaded into trucks. Edward pulls them to the steelworks, where they are melted down and used again. One day, Edward saw a traction engine in the yard. Hello, he said. You're not broken and rusty. What are you doing here? I'm Trevor, said the traction engine sadly. They're going to break me up next week. What a shame, said Edward. My driver says I only need some paint, brasso, and oil to be as good as new. Trevor went on sadly, but it's no good. My master doesn't want me. I suppose it's because I'm old-fashioned. Edward snorted indignantly. People say I'm old-fashioned, but I don't care. The fat controller says I'm a useful engine. My driver says I'm useful too, replied Trevor. I sometimes feel ill, but I don't give up like these tractors. I struggle on and finish the job. I've never broken down in my life, he ended proudly. What work did you do? asked Edward kindly. My master would send us from farm to farm. We threshed the corn, hauled logs, sawed timber, and did lots of other work. We made friends at all the farms and saw them every year. The children loved to see us come. They followed us in crowds and watched us all day long. Our driver would sometimes give them rides. Trevor shut his eyes, remembering. I like children, he said simply. Oh yes, I like children. Broken up? What a shame! Broken up? What a shame, clanged Edward as he went back to work. I must tell Trevor, I must. He thought of the people he knew who liked engines. Edward had lots of friends. Strangely, none of them had room for a traction engine at home. It's a shame, it's a shame, he hissed as he brought his coaches to the station. Then, peep, peep, he whistled. Why didn't I think of him before? Waiting there on the platform was the very person. Morning, Charlie, Orny said. Hello, Edward. You look upset. What's the matter, Charlie? He asked the driver. There's a traction engine in the scrapyard, Vicar. He'll be broken up next week. And it's a shame. Jem Cole says he's never drove a better engine. Do save him, sir. You've got room, sir. Yes, Edward. I've got room, laughed the vicar, but I don't need a traction engine. He'll saw wood and give children rides. Do buy him, sir, please. We'll see, said the vicar, climbed into the train. Jim Cole came on Saturday afternoon. The reverend's coming to see you, Trevor. Maybe he'll buy you. Do you think he will? asked Trevor hopefully. He will when I've lit your fire and cleaned you up, said Jim. When the vicar and his two boys arrived in the evening, Trevor was blowing off steam. He hadn't felt so happy for months. Watch this, reverence, called Jem, and Trevor chuffered happily about the yard. Oh, Daddy, do buy him, pleaded the boys, jumping up and down in their excitement. Now I'll try, and the vicar climbed up beside Jem. Show your paces, Trevor, he said, and drove him about the yard. Then, when he went into the office, he came out smiling. I got him cheap, Jim, cheap. Did you hear that, Trevor? cried Jim. The reverend saved you, and you'll live at the vicarage now. Peep, peep, whistled Trevor happily. Will you drive him home for me, Jim, and take these scallywags with you? They won't want to come in the car when there's a traction engine to ride on. Trevor's home in the vicarage orchard is close to the railway, and he sees Edward every day. His pain is spotless, and his brass shines like gold. He saws firewood in winter, and Jim sometimes borrows him when the tractor fails. Trevor likes doing his old jobs, but his happiest day is the day of the church fate. Then, the long wooden seat bolted to his bunker, 
which hovers around the orchard, giving rise to children. Long afterwards, you will see him shut his eyes, remembering. I like children, he whispers happily.